I'm going to speak a little bit uh, about the uh, so-called green power markets uh, in Europe because that's closely related to um, um, this protection and uh, as is like an interesting new phenomenon phenomenon on, on the European markets. I know that we have here representatives from Norway, Sweden, Finland, somebody from Russia, Baltic states. And all of these uh, uh, countries I mentioned have very different electricity markets. And uh, it's usually very interesting to discuss about the electricity markets, especially what comes to hydropower um, uh, on the Nordic context, and uh, especially about the market uh, side of the electricity. I will speak a little bit about the uh, Ecoenergy label, which is um, uh, a new European wide eco label for electricity agreements. And I will speak a little bit about green power and um, um, the <coughs> darker side of the, uh, of the market. Uh, then how we deal with uh, hydropower issues and then I will give you a very inspiring example of, um, uh, in my opinion, the most advanced uh, electricity product uh, coming into markets in, uh, uh, in, in terms of the fish pro uh, the protection. And I think Jasper will actually tell a bit more about that then later. So, um, my salaries are paid. It's important to tell always who pays your salaries because then you can, yeah, we have this saying in Finland that you are singing the songs of the, the guy who uh, funds you. So, my salaries are paid by the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation, which is the um, uh, oldest and biggest member-based uh, environmental NGO in Finland. The first uh, uh, local associations uh, uh, were already founded in 19th century and uh, now we are um, active in all parts of Finland nowadays with uh, almost 40,000 members. Um, I'm heading there uh, the International Secretariat uh, for the Ecoenergy Network, which is a network of European NGOs, environmental NGOs, interested in uh, this new uh, liberalized uh, electricity market in Europe. And the most important tool of this network is um, an eco label for electricity agreements. I will say a few words about that. So, first of all, uh, anyone here, the Norwegians maybe, or somebody who knows what kind of uh, electricity the Norwegians are consuming? Any Norwegians here? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, it's, uh, a gentleman here says uh, hydropower. Um, in reality, uh, you are not consuming hydropower, you are producing hydropower because up there you see the production uh, of uh, electricity in Norway. The blue color is uh, uh, hydropower and there, here, here you see the consumption. So only 20% of the electricity consumed in Norway is uh, 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 renewable. Um, here probably from this 20%, I would say maybe 50% or so is um, uh, uh, hydropower. What is the reason? Is that within the last four or five years, the Norwegian energy companies uh, began to sell, like actively campaign, uh, to sell uh, the value, uh, the origin of the electricity, of, of, of the hydropower uh, abroad, especially to Sweden, Finland, Germany, and Benelux countries. Um, Actually, the market size nowadays is like 300 terawatt hours of electricity annually on all, all of Europe, of this renewable electricity market. And about 30% uh, of that comes from Norway and is Norwegian hydropower. So a lot of uh, my colleagues, uh, for, uh, like the environmental activists in Belgium or Netherlands, they buy Norwegian hydropower because they think that that's the most green thing what you can imagine. It's hydropower, no carbon emissions. It comes from uh, Nordic countries, from Scandinavia, what can be more environmental friendly? Okay, we know here that it's not always the truth. And actually, this is also one uh, reason why uh, the uh, market is very different in Norway. Uh, in Norway, it's, it's even though Norway was the very first country in the world to liberalize the electricity markets, in 1991, uh, Norway, um, uh, the energy companies in Norway, they never really launched so-called green electricity products because everybody in Norway thought that the electricity is in any case hydropower. It's always hydropower. You cannot do anything with that. But this is not true anymore and we have been trying to inform actually many Norwegians about 
that our Norwegian um, um, sister organizations also to convince them that hey, you should maybe do something on this because uh, maybe it's not also good that if you actually buy, or maybe not everybody wants to buy Finnish nuclear power in Norway or uh, coal power or something, but maybe the environmental NGOs would like to take some kind of a stance there, or have, have some, uh, to say something about that. Um, this is an example of um, uh, green power in uh, Finland. Uh, this is the West Salmon River in Finland, actually, Kemioki. And, uh, um, yeah, this is the reality of the uh, green power sales usually in Europe. Because most of the green power mark, uh, on the, of the renewable electricity markets, most of this green power comes from hydropower stations, which are more or less like that. And this is Kemiyoki uh, River in uh, northern Finland. And who buys this? Oh, that, there is a picture of Jasper. I, I'm sorry, Jasper is not buying that, but it's about that. Uh, so here is a picture. Of, a picture of Jasper was taken when he heard about uh, the fact that the Finnish national railways are actually buying uh, green power from Kemioki from the previous power station, and then they took a picture of Jasper, like showing how a fisherman, what the fisherman thinks about that. So it was not a very nice idea, especially when the national railways are building all of their image, like branding. They are branding themselves as a green company with green colors, and they say that this is the greenest choice you can make, and then even the salmon likes the choice here, that they are buying the high power from the community houses, which is weird. But usually the market here is a lot uh, people and companies, or actually companies and big corporations buy this uh, hydropower from uh, uh, as, as green electricity because of carbon disclosure reasons most most often. Then they then you can count your carbon emissions as uh, zero. Uh, Western European normal household consumers, as I told about these, uh, my colleagues in Belgium or Netherlands, they are very eager to buy non. They have been very eager to buy Nordic hydropower because they think that it's very environmental friendly. In Belgium and Netherlands, not very because they don't have a lot of hydropower, so it's not so well known about the negative uh, effects of hydropower uh, production. Then big organizations like Volvo, for instance, buys uh, 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 hydropower. Deutsche Bahn, so which is the national railways of Germany, uh, state of Finland even buys all of its electricity from actually nowadays from mostly from Kemioki power stations, but also from power stations in Norway and Sweden, but it's always uh, hydropower. Okay, I may be criticizing them to do that, but um, when I meet with these people, with these electricity consumers, bigger or small, I understand that usually the purpose why they do that, they, they think that they are doing something good. And, um, so this is why I believe that a solution for the problem is better information. Because you can really make a difference by your electricity purchase. So we actually started, because of these kind of reasons, there was a lot of like big international companies, like for instance Deutsche Post, when they switched to uh, green power, they called it green power, and it was hydropower, so they were heavily criticized in their shareholder meeting for, for doing that. And many of these big companies got scared, and they, they asked that there has to be some kind of an international solution, like some kind of recommendation what we can do. And we also found very stupid, felt very stupid here that we were campaigning for building uh, fish passages, for instance, to some power stations, or a power station that we have, have been um, against for decades. Our sister organizations promoted the idea to buy the uh, greenest electricity from that power station. They, they did that in Belgium. So we thought that we need some kind of European cooperation because the electricity is now traded over the borders. So we started in 2009 to develop the European wide end label for electricity agreements. The problem is not only with hydropower, but there are also problems related to wind power, the sustainability criteria for wind power stations, for instance, or sustainability criteria for bioenergy, but I'm not going to speak about that now here. So we actually interviewed over 400 NGOs, a lot of energy companies, producers, suppliers, traders and brokers, uh, fish activists, and we asked all of them the same question, what kind of a power agreement you can really call or claim to be ecolabeled? And then after many years of consultation rounds, we came up last year 
with the final criteria for the first uh, European-wide ecolabel for electricity. It was launched last year, and um, I'm quite happy about the results, even though there is always something to, to be improved, and we will see how, uh, how all this uh, uh, will work. So we set actually uh, criteria that Ecolabel itself is a non-profit. It sets uh, criteria for consumer information, so that the consumer must get proper information where the electricity comes from. Uh, quite often it's like, for instance, it's uh, some of you, if you come from Sweden or Finland, or maybe from, uh, it's a lot of Icelandic geothermal power traded here, but they don't tell the companies that it's Icelandic power, because it sounds a little bit weird, there is no grid connection and like that, but it's, it's legal to do that, but it's not, you don't need to tell that it was from Iceland or anything like that. So we set certain uh, criteria of consumer information. We set uh, criteria for tracking the origin, how you can claim that your electricity comes from knowledge of higher power station even if you are located in Helsinki. This is what we set criteria. We set sustainability criteria for all renewables. And then we set so-called additionality criteria. This last uh, uh, point I think is very important. Because what I mean with that is that if I buy something what is called green, uh, isn't it so then I think that usually people suppose that something changes to be better in the world, right? So this is called additionality. Either it means that some more new renewables are born, or maybe the old higher power station gets more environmental friendly because of your purchase, but in any case you have to see some kind of a change happening in the world. And that's what we also set the uh, criteria for. With high power, just shortly, the main criteria is that if you are a high power station owner, you can apply for Eco Energy eligibility. And you get the eligibility by implementing the most important measures which mitigate the negative impacts of your high power station. If your high power station is such a terrible power station that people are asking for uh, uh, destroying the power station, so then you cannot get the eligibility for that power station. If your power station needs a fish pass to be built before getting the eco energy eligibility, so then we are asking for the company to uh, ensure that. If the power station is already like so good that we cannot find any kind of measures there, what we can what could mitigate the negative impacts of that higher power station, so then you don't need to implement any measures. That's maybe the most important uh, way to do it. We always make a local consultation with somebody in Sweden, a power station applies for the eligibility. We ask from the local uh, fishermen associations, uh, local activists about what you could do in this power station to uh, mitigate the negative impacts there. Uh, then there, there are also criteria on the minimum flow. And, uh, there is a, a certain minimum amount, what we say, that you have to pay to an environmental fund, which then invests the money again into uh, projects, which mitigate again the negative impact. So part of the profit, what the company <coughs> is making, has to be used in, uh, in uh, improving the ecological status of this uh, uh, watershed <coughs> where the power comes from. So in Finland, for instance, we have that this fund has been in uh, use a bit longer than on the European level and it generated over almost 1 million euro funding for good projects like river restoration, uh, fish pass uh, construction and uh, research uh, uh, projects. And then two last slides. Um, uh, the most uh, inspiring example what we have seen happening on the markets is uh, happening now at Muski and Joki, and with that it's something of the Asperger we we'll talk a bit more. Uh, uh, in Muski and Joki River is what used to be the most important salmon river in southern Finland. Uh, the river is home to endangered freshwater pearl mussel, what you see here in the picture of. Uh, the species needs uh, salmon or trout to reproduce. But because the power stations, there are four power stations which were built like 40 years ago, it means that there has been nothing somewhat or trout up there in, in 40 years. And the youngest the mussels in the river are already like 30, 40 years old. So they can luckily reproduce even if they are 50 years old. So we have some time to save the, uh, the mussels in the river. There has been a long fight between fish species to the power station, but we have not seen them with fish species yet. With the new project going on with the uh, 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 project fish run, I think we are finally getting 
very interesting uh, results, and we are hoping to get the Vispasis built there. How does it work? Is that there has been a campaign going on in Finland where we are asking, because usually the problem is from the producer's point of view, I work a lot with energy companies, so from the producer's point of view, it's really problematic that people are only asking that I don't care anything else, but you have to keep me the electricity as cheap as possible. So that they are, the problem is that uh, people are not asking, or consumers are not asking for sustainability criteria. They are not choosing the company based on how well uh, they are performing uh, in, uh, from the ecological point. And that is a problem. But you can change it very easily. You just uh, add sustainability criteria. For instance, in this case, we say that are collecting names of people who promise to switch their electricity agreement to the energy company, to owners of these power stations, if they promise to keep the fish passes there, and these consumers are even willing to pay 8 euro extra for every month uh, uh, to make the fish passes happen. And we are now getting very close to that number. Uh, I'm very sure that for the first time ever in the Finnish history, the energy company itself would say that, yes, we want ourselves to invest money in and we want the power, uh, the business to be built because then we are going to get more revenues out of that. And I think this is what Jasper will continue a bit about. You can read more about the label on the Eco Energy Report. Thank you.